Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Jeeves here at the Avocado Show. I just told a really bad joke and everybody wants me banned right now. That's what you're seeing here on the stream. This is why I'm getting the ban. The ban me now is because I told a really bad joke and I, I can't repeat it because everyone's dying. Anyhow, if you're seeing this on YouTube, it's because you're seeing this on YouTube. And we are live right now on Twitch and I have all our friends, our usual suspect here, joining me on a happy Aloha Friday Avocado Show music stream and whatever other stupid things I might say uh, so we're gonna do a, a run of donos a run of uh, cheese and you know spin the wheel and some donos so uh, yeah why don't we just get going on that I hope everybody had a wonderful week uh, some of you are probably into your weekend already here on the stream and uh, I'm just happy to be listening to some music with you guys let me make one last adjustment here uh, as usual, uh, as we move on to, if anybody needs or hears any oddity in the volume differences, you know, the beginning of the avocado show, please let me know. Okay, so the first four that we got going right now are makeup donos from uh, September the 1st. I do want to honor that really quick. And then after that, uh, we'll have some cheese. We'll take a cheese break, and then I'll be doing it from the amount down. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Uh, we're going to be doing a track from... Uh, our uh, profile username, Mitzi Souls 2 We're going to be starting with some anime. And uh, the track is called, I think, uh, what is it saying here? Uh, the Past Destination. And the anime is uh, Zero. I think it is to say Zero. Uh, second season. Uh, so the little message is, is, Hi, Jeeb's been watching for a long time. Always love the content. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. The, oh, it's R-E colon zero. So is it regarding zero? Is that the name of the um, anime? Uh, it has many heartfelt moments, especially with the soundtrack. So it was very hard to pick one of the best ones. This place during a very emotional moment when the character can speak out about their suffering. Oh, emotional it is. And that's what I love to do is to sp speak out about our suffering without getting canceled. Okay, let me go to this here. I gotta ditch this, and away we go, almost. All right. I love the subtle harp behind the melody. Definitely like a heart tug moment, without a doubt. I love that pullback. Gave us a second to breathe and coming back in with the cellos just to kind of warm up something. It's beautifully sad, 
but it gives right there kind of gives you a little hope sometimes it goes into these uh, sus you know fourths that resolve briefly giving you it's almost like taking a breath there it's like it's not letting you under the waterline all the way That sustained cello, something like this. I would have used something like this in a reveal, like a pain reveal kind of scene. Using that dark low note, just keeping it through. Legends of the Fall style string arrangements in this. Love the English horn in there. At least I think it sounds like it is. triumphant moment maybe in releasing that darker energy that nice build we just got past this has a vibe of kind of a recognition of maybe the the pain being released. Beautiful, very chill, very emotional piece. Um, you know, obviously this is playing uh, from from what it feels like in the description is playing is directly related to a particular scene. Uh, so this is it, it. It was a sad release of pain kind of vibe that I was getting with the arrangement. Um, a couple times the dynamics kind of shifted a little bit, gave us a little something to breathe in between it. There was even like about a two beat pause of silence in between some of the arrangement, uh, which within the scene, sometimes that's just as hard tugging as having something there. Then there was that part of the arrangement where at the bottom they were just, uh, the cellos were just holding down, I don't know if it was the tonic or... Uh, the drone, the one that keeps you just kind of heavy into it while there was questioning kind of uh, arrangements meandering around it. But it sounded like, like the, the character may have come in, you know, to explain themselves or, or to confess of something that they've been feeling or something of that nature, very emotional. Got it to a place that's when we started to hear a little bit more of the horns coming in and a little more support of the flute and uh, some of the wind instruments when I thought it sounded like an English horn was the delivering of whatever that emotion was. And then the rest of the track was kind of a sigh of relief kind of vibe, like it's off their shoulders. 
and then they just had to sit there and stew and let that heaviness you know pass through beautiful track really is and it was it's a great way for me to start the stream because this was like kind of a nice break into whatever the future holds it's just very very calming <coughs> even though this was a heavy emotional track very chill let's, you know bring the bring the energy to a place all right well thank you very much i appreciate that i i'm glad you shared that here with the chat and everything so thank you next up the driver 758 thank you the driver coming in and hanging out and we are going to be doing a band called tv on the radio why do i think i may have done one already by them uh, no message or anything, so let's just hit it. All right. Hope it isn't broken, tried to keep it open, but I couldn't hold it. Smashed it down for all to see. I tried to get repairs done I couldn't fix it So I picked it up and smashed it down For all to see You know this is going to burst open Somewhere right But I remember when we were so cool Love that interval Love that interval That's that burst I was talking about. It's going to show up somewhere. I love this really small slap delay on his voice as well. Now we're stumbling through the motions, criminal and careless. Thought you were my best friend, now I couldn't care less. Can't you see? And you're playing my emotions way out of proportion. Damage and distortion blasting through your fantasy. That drum pattern is intoxicating. Also makes you really focus on the musicality of the melody. Nice little industrial touches with the arrangements and some of the choices of the um, sounds that they're using for their arrangements. I love the contrast between his vocals and the melody 
the beauty, great sounds, to the choice of uh, sounds that the, the arrangers are using to write. If there's such a thing as an industrial, vibey, ambient ethereal. I'm only laughing because there's times where I've played patches and if I've released my foot pedal a certain way, it changes a little bit of the dynamic of the velocity, that little bing, it kind of changed on its way out. Kind of reminds me of something that I would have done. Love the track. Uh, I, I want to go back really quick to the fact that that drum pattern, um, semi lo fi ish vibe, um, just kind of sits there and it doesn't budge. But it's not intrusive uh, by, by them keeping it that kind of lo-fi vibe. Just kind of got you in, kind of just keeps you in the groove and gets you in there. No big fills, no big symbols, no symbols whatsoever. Nothing to, to emphasize change. A lot of times in songs, you'll, you'll, even if you're not... If you don't understand songwriting or something, you tell and feel a change is coming, especially if in between these changes or when a change is about to be made, you might hear Tom Tom's boom. But they really relied on the um, uh, the unique arrangements and the dynamics of the arrangements. Remember, I said at the very beginning, I said, "Ooh, it sounds like it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pop somewhere. It's gonna blow up. It's gonna, you know, fill our ears soon." And by about the 53 second mark, it did, and I like that. And also with the vocals, they really focused on, let's go ahead and, and spread the arrangement love instead of it being keys and stuff like that, using background vocals as well. It sounded like they had like multiple hooks in the track, kind of repeated itself a little bit. But um, great track, Driver. I, I hear you just made it here just in time <laughs> to get your, uh, uh, to listen to your track. I hope you heard most of it. If not, you know where it'll be. It'll be on that YouTube channel. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue on. The Kebab Seller wants us to listen to an anime. U-G-O. U-G-O. And uh, we're going to be listening to a song called G, like the letter G. And um, his message is, I was torn between which version of the track to request, and he opted for this one. So this is coming to us from our uh, friend, the kebab seller. Who we got here? When was this game, or when was this anime to this track released? Anybody know? This kind of has that 16-bit vibe. Makes sense, Turnip. 2016, really? Oh, okay. But doesn't it have that like 16-bit K vibe? <laughs> a little bit of a Mozart move there.
You know what's fun about this is when I, I listen to something and I hear uh, some of the synths that might be used to kind of um, simulate, not imitate, but simulate uh, like uh, string section, horn section. And it has this very unique analog digi vibe to it and stuff. The way I was listening to it at the very beginning, it did sound kind of like a 16-bit kind of energy to it. But then I was going, ah, oh, the reverbs are a little wider. Not that I'm an aficionado of 16-bit or even 8-bit. I'm just trying, every time I try to do that, I'm like, we'll see. Um, Itty bit was then became 8 bit, became 16 bit, and then 32 bit. And I know that so happened somewhere in the 90s. <coughs> Arrangement wise, um, like I said, there was little, there was little flourishes of different um, uh, classical influences on this. But as it spread out into the last like 35 seconds, is when I said, okay, well, if this track, uh, if I guess you guys, some of you guys are saying that the anime started in the late 90s. Hat maybe when it went all the way through as far as the early 2000s, but this particular track started to open up a little more where I was saying, okay, now even with the choral parts that we were listening to, even though they were really saturated in the reverb, and sometimes you can't tell if they're saying words or not because as a composer that I have choral modules and stuff, I can trigger them to vowels, you know, or I can actually, I can actually write a part. I could actually go into some of my modules. I have one in particular that if I was to type in, welcome to the avocado show, type it in a certain way, and I played chord patterns and changes, you know, to, to affect the syllables on that, that's you. we'd get, welcome to the avocado show, you know, so. But, um, plus I also don't know if this was a, this was anime, so once again, I don't know if this was a fight, a battle of some sort, because it definitely had that energy. So, yeah, no, a lot of that. Great Sage Sun in the house. Uh, let's see, we're doing the band called Rhapsody of Fire. Guys, this is metal. It looks like we're already covering all of the harder genres right up front. Let's see what we got here. Um, okay, it looks, is this going to be live? It might be live. Uh, this is the Rhapsody of Fire. The Magic of the Wizard's Dream is the name of the track. Hey, Great State Son, how you doing? Is it a good thing that you're up after 2 a.m. or a bad thing? <laughs> uh, let me see. <coughs> Excuse me. The message is, this is po Power of the Funk mentioned in the collab in the chat last. So here we go. This is the Sir Christopher Lee, rest in power, singing with them. He joined them on a on quite a few albums and eventually made a few of his own. This was in his 80s as well. Wow. All right, let's go. That musical theater operatic vibrato. Absolutely wonderful match between these two singers. Is my fate bound to 
fade. What's going on? All right. Um, you know, I noticed I didn't say much during about the, during this because uh, there was in my mind. I'm thinking to myself, there's a very unique. Um, let me get to a nice place here. Nice place where everyone's singing. There we go. Um, there is a very unique sound that comes from the uh, the symphonic metal a genre of metal. Uh, that you know, if you if, you know, minus there there weren't no cr you know banging guitars in this. However, you could have added some power metal chord changes and stuff like that, and this would have brought you into that era or that that genre of symphonic metal. So many bands, you know, but it always to my mind comes, you know like a Nightwish vibe and stuff like this. What I uh, was really uh, attracted to in this was, so you have the classic gentleman, Christopher Lee. We have the other singer, forgive me, I don't know his name. Beautiful matchup in their tone, and it really helped with the storytelling, obviously. Uh, but then what was great about it is that you had the choir in the background that was kind of keeping... Uh, that was at a maybe like an octave higher, a little bit more of like the second soprano, first sopranos, <coughs> and tenors were kind of carrying a little bit more of the arrangements back there. So it was really well balanced, and the proportion and the and the arrangement, you know, to to choral support to uh, the two leads was beautiful. Uh, the the song itself also had kind of I don't want to say kind of this Viking esque era. I don't know if you guys would agree with me on that. Sometimes I get a little crossed up between um, Renaissance, medieval, Viking-esque. I know those are still a couple hundred years apart and stuff like that. I'm not a genius at that. Um, but apparently, for all of you out here, um, I was watching the stream a little bit, uh, very well aware of where this comes from and Christopher Lee. So uh, that, was, that was good. This was a gr great change up. So far, this stream's been really badass. So, <coughs> okay, let's now continue on. I'm going to do, uh, let me see. I'm going to do, let me do this here. Stand by. Uh, I'm going to do this one more, and then we're going to go to some cheese after this. Okay, very unique song name, title here called Shit Catapult. And the name of the band is, uh, I don't know if it's Lyro or I, I know, Iro Rantala New Trio. And he says in the message, brace yourself, dear friend. The lyrics and the visuals are strong. The lyrics and the visuals are strong with you. Okay, I don't know what this is, guys, but this, I don't know. We've been forewarned. Uh, kind of experimental jazz, maybe? I don't know. I kind of caught that. I don't know, guys. Let's do this. All right. This is what you call a beer, a bar clearing track. <laughs>
<laughs> They're having the best time ever. A little ragtimey vibe there. like a best of medley of something. <laughs> He's good. the bass sensation left a little bit when he went into his lead. <laughs> yeah, full on Mr. Bongo. Sprinkles here. Boy, he's just pounding that stomp pedal. Sounds like this could be just about half a dozen video games. This passage right here. Matter of fact, he looks like he's Mario's uncle, not Mario's brother. stuff happening in and out of that. Wow, this guy's tearing on the piano. Feelings, all feelings. Get up and walk away. Mic drop. <laughs> I dug this track. Very fun. It's very ensemble-y in a few different styles that we're weaving through there. But Infused was this kind of haphazard, um, can kicking down the street kind of vibe with the uh, beatbox guy and the guitar player and all the really dusty, dirty little uh, uh, stomp pedal you know, additions to what he was doing. It was a little, it was definitely out of the box, you know, if you know. Uh, I love the piano player's um, energy in this and the feeling in which he was playing. I also really enjoy watching, you know, really good piano. I'm not, I don't consider myself anywhere near real, even really good piano player. I don't have the day-to-day -day in it. And I haven't really played on ivory for years, unfortunately, sadly enough. But just the watching hand techniques, 
whether you're a concert pianist that we've seen here on the channel or, or a gentleman like this, just fluid. You know, and there was that one thing where he was doing, I think, was it those uh, s eighth triplets or something he was doing? He was just like, I'm like, oh my God, just great technique. Fun track, super fun track to listen to. All right, guys, Wheel of Cheese. We're doing Wheel of Cheese. I'm going to do one noob, one queso, then go back to the donos. So that's how we're going to get through some of this stuff here. So let's go ahead and let's do us a weasel of cheese. Don't worry, that is not, that is the old weasel of cheese. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and let me set up my, my weasel of cheese a spinning thing here. And so this is going to be the noobs. Oh, that's it. That's all we have here on the noobs. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Hustler. 134-3x. And... Uh, who else? Exentia. It's just the three of you guys. This is great. Love that. Rock, paper, scissors, junk in a pole. Here in Hawaii, we say junk in a pole. But no, we spin the cheese, guys. Let's go. You guys do a side bet on what color, okay? I'll wait 10 seconds. You guys put in your side bet of the color. Yep, yep. That is fat cheese. That is some fat cheese. That was very well, very well said. Okay, guys, are we ready? We ready? Let's go. Fat cheese. Fat cheese. Mr. Hooster. Mr. Hooster. You are our first winner of our Wheel of Cheese on the uh, Happy Aloha Friday Avocado Show. Let's see what Mr. Hooster would like. Uh, stand by. Uh, this is the game called the Path of Exile. Uh, never heard of Path of Exile. So let's see what we have here. The Path of Exile, the name of the track is called... Uh, well, the name of the path is called Path of Axi Exile. But this one's called the, the Tangle. So, you guys ready? We go. I go. We go wherever you go, Wheel of Cheese winner goes. Let's go. Go. Ooh, nice. Industrial synth heaviness. Oh, this is good. got that gnawing part of the arrangements where you feel like you've got gnats or stinging buzz, you know, hornets around you. It's menacing. They know what they're doing when they're adding the organ to this. Making it dark and foreboding. Coral chants in the background, driving home, stick it right in your heart. What's in the background? It's that, oh man, it's just like swatting away hornets kind of a vibe. The, the thumbnail looks really freaking gnarly. Like, if the thumbnail is anything that I have to look at, like, meaning, like, listening to this and looking at that thumbnail, matched perfectly. You know, untrusting, dark, sing singing, 
uncomfort. Is what this brought because they used a lot of a lot of they used a lot of like that kind of shrilly singy synth wavy stuff going on. The drum, you know, the tom patterns and the stuff were were kind of the the normal go to uh, to bring out that kind of anxiety and stuff dark. Um, but there was that in the background. There's that, and it was going the whole time. I'm sure it sounded much better than that. But it was, and that just makes it all the creepier because you just never know if, especially if this is a part of the track where it's running away. Oh, this is a boss fight, Mr. Huster. Ah, I see. Yeah, still yet. So yeah, in a boss fight, you never know what's coming, you know, unless you've played the game a few times and you're starting to get a pattern down. But yeah, it definitely had that. So dark, gnarly. Well done. Thank you for bringing that into the chat, into the house, into the avocado show. Refreshing data. Queso grande. Queso pobre. Hotiroto. Toriroto. Okay, let's see what we got here. Mr. Houston, thank you so much. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ah, this is mild slice. Mild. This is mild queso pobre. We're not into the big ones yet. I don't think we have that many folks uh, here on the stream. I think we might have like at least 30 or 40 and so but uh, this is this is not one of our more severe friday streaming uh queso pobre oh 81 folks okay cool thank you a few of you guys lurking in the background let's spin who do we got oh 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 almost damn registration no Oh, so close, damn registration, but Crossface Buffalo gave you the people's elbow. Okay, Crossface Buffalo. <laughs> See, you guys have that inside thing at 1 a.m. He's a cheater. He's a cheater. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. War has been declared. Okay, let me see what I got here from the Crossface Buffalo. Great, we're sticking with the game thing. Uh, we're doing something from Final Sa Fantasy VII. Aha. Uh -huh. I know this music kind of well. Unless it's the Final Fantasy VII updated version, then negative. This track is called Queen's Blood. Oh, and it looks like from the updated version. Okay, so. Let's see what this says here in the message. Uh, this is a song that plays during the Queen's Blood card game. There's a card game in the game? Uh, side quest. Oh, it's a side quest. All right. I don't know what that is. You'll guys have to educate me on that later. In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the song starts off slow as you are selecting the cards for your opening hand. Then the tempo shifts when your card game starts. Okay. Like that. Tell me the story as we go. All right. Got that smoky Vegas, like, you know, card table, like, cigar, little tumbler with some whiskey, dole out the cards. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, Zig guy. That's a, I'm leaning right into that double bass. This little bit reminds me of that guy that plays the bass saxophone. He dances kind of weird. Who's that guy? He does that great show. Oh, listen to what the drummer's doing. Got that Rat Pack 50s vibe here now. I'm waiting for Frank or Dean or Joey Bishop or... It's 
so old time casino. But more badass. Love with the strings playing. I know the drummer was crushing, wasn't he? I almost did. I love what the strings does to the arrangement here. So 50s in its vibe, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring your hands together for Mr. Dean Martin. Joey Bishop. Frank Sinatra. Is that not... I love this sound. What a badass track. Really. Now, I think we all agree that this definitely had that 50s Rat Pack... Um, that to say it was big band is one thing, but it's the style of arrangement, you know, that kind of live show vibes of like, you know, back in the days and stuff. Um, but as far as the track itself, I kind of was really focusing in a lot of the drummer. The drummer was just absolutely smoking and the bass player, obviously, and you know what I love? I'm going to put that on a shirt. So I never have to say it again. You know what I love? But you know what I love is great engineering on this uh, big band style, but the double bass has this really close-up, intimate vibe. Because you got all this power coming out of the horn section, the drummer's just crushing. Strings are okay. Those are, I mean, volume-wise, aren't, aren't going to impede. But in the mixing, there's that, that bass. It's got a nice little dry um, kind of touch to it, which adds a unique... A dynamic sense in the hearing experience. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. It's the only thing that doesn't have reverbs or anything on it, you know, or, or overhead mics or anything prepared to give you any other experience in the bass, like boom, 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 boom. You know, time to dig in. I loved it. I felt it. Uh huh. Yeah, guys, I almost choked on the peanut butter. You guys saw that? And it's a chunky peanut butter, so. I got to get a little more peanut butter off the screen. I hit it. Okay. Browse. Oh, yeah. I know. Don't choke on... Oh, 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 Mason Gator. Oh, it, uh. All right, guys. We're going back into donos. So we'll do a few donos and we'll do cheesy like that, okay? Makuzia. Where are you, Makuzia? Quato is coming for me. <laughs> are you here, Makuzi? You've got to be here. I know. There you are. Everybody say hi to Makuzi. He's in the house. He's coming in hot right now. Thank you once again. It's, thank you. Very, very humbling. You don't know. And uh, let's see what we got here. We are going to be doing an anime called Freirin. Freirin? 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 Freirin. You do that to me on purpose? Makuzia, so I can't. I've just got through choking on my peanut butter, and you make me go frerren, frerren, frerren. <coughs> so Makuzia wants us to hear. Um, oh, 
Uh, so that's the name of the anime, and the name of the track is Fear Brought Me This Far. All right. I, I have to admit, Makuji, I think you've had me listen to a lot from this uh, anime, and um, I, I look forward to listening to this. I recognize the thumbnail. Sometimes it's the only way I can say, Did I, have I done something like that before? But I recognize the thumbnail. So here we go. Let's do this. Yeah, we've done like three tracks off of them. Okay, so it, it is you bringing it in here. Love it. Here we go. Mm. Nice little threading from the oboe to the clarinet now into the flutes with the support. big section. Emphasize it, bring the choir in, bring it in. great section um so they i'm only going to go by the title where it says this brought me this far seems to maybe have been i'm going to say a midway through um but what was this anime right the original site yes it's anime i think did i space i forgot to it's like maybe perhaps halfway through it like uh, uh, it's a celebration of uh, like I've gotten this far but they started off really nicely with it sounded like they opened up I had to listen to it really closely this, as the next few notes came with just a single oboe just kind of coming in with the melody and then turned it over into there was a clarinet behind it that kind of lifted it gave, gave it a little warmth and then turned it over into the flutes as the arrangement starts to expand uh, and then we get immediately into that pulse uh, that the strings are playing and at that point, uh, I started to realize, and, and Makuzia, you left a little bit of a um, kind of a statement there about the size of the strings. It sounded like they did have a pretty bold string section there. Maybe something like a, I would, I would say maybe a 16, 8, 4, and 2 kind of a setup. Um, 16 violins, 8 viola, 4 cello, 2 double bass. And um, the, the, it wasn't quite spiccato. It was a little more marcato, the Boeing, that dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> Spiccato is more of the lifting of the Boeing and hitting the string with the, with, the, with the stroke. And it was so well played. I was listening to that going, oh, my God, listen how tight that is. You know? But that was the pulse, obviously, of the track and kind of of a moment of, like, standing up there and kind of maybe going, I've come this far. And this is where it ends. And then it was kind of like once the record, it kind of like once that was delivered, that energy was delivered, then they lightened up that load again and let it kind of, you know, air out a little bit. 
Um, sometimes, I don't know, there's times where, I mean, tracks like this, I kind of, even though I know that it would be kind of uh, overladen with uh, effects, voiceovers and stuff, sometimes I know, like, I wonder, I wonder what this would look like on, with scene, you know, to see if I'm at least getting, if I'm at least reading or emotionally doing theater of the mind to the music, if you know what that means. So, the Budapest Scoring Orchestra. Yeah, that's, well, you know, that was a really big movement to Makuzi. I just, as you bring this up just briefly, I want to touch on that. Um, in the, I'm going to say in the early 2000s, uh, and my dad had experienced this too, like it went from everything was done in Hollywood with the, you know, the 49, you know, which was the union and everything strings that it was starting to get just too expensive and film companies, you know, it wasn't necessarily even the composer's uh, choice would go to Budapest or they would go to, uh, where's the other super big one that everybody went to record their orchestras? Oh, guys, somebody help me out. I'm on, maybe you can help me. Where's, where's that one city in Europe? That a lot of these composers and orchestras, I can't remember, I can, I can picture it, but I'm, because I'm getting there, I can't quite remember the city, but all these movies were done in, with these orchestras that were just absolutely phenomenal, but it was just, um, Prague, thank you, thank you, that uh, Zig guy. My dad went to Prague like seven or eight times to do big string sections for the movies that he was working on as an orchestrator, because they just didn't, you know. It was really funny. They either did stuff at Paramount and we were able to have that kind of budget. And then there were times we were going, we just don't have the budget. It'll cost us less to send our composer and our orchestrator to Prague. And then, of course, you know, uh, mind numbing. So to know that this was Budapest as well, um, even though I don't know. Here's the other thing is, though, I don't know where the, the base camp of production for this is. I'm, I'm assuming it's in Japan. So... Going into the European countries is always a flex. Plus, what the hell? You get to eat some, uh, some wonderful food while you're over there working. So, Prague rock. Oh, my God. Bruh. If, I, if you were here, I'd give you a high five. That, that's great. I like that. Prague rock. Yeah. Yes, Prague is very, very well known in the industry for... Can you do it and make it sound like this, but maybe a little cheaper? But they are very qualified. It's an unbelievable sound they get. And they're incredible musicians as well. Okay, next up. Uh, we have Lisa. Lisa Wolf. With a vibrato, I did that. Lisa. Uh, we're going to be doing a band called Vinnie Moore. And let's see which one we're going to be doing today. This one is going to be a song called The Maze. Uh, she, she's warning me of a little bit of an info dump here. Okay, this is a long read, so I'm going to read the, um, a little chunk of it. Uh, Vinnie Moore could be described as your favorite guitar player's favorite guitarist, your anti-shredder's favorite shred guitarist, one of the foundational musicians of neoclassical metal. Oh, I didn't know that. And the most humble musician will ever find uh, a genre filled with egos. Hmm. As soon as, as soon as you as soon as you said uh, neoclassical metal, I don't know why everything just went into Ingve. Um, his influences is understated due to the latter, but if you're a fan of Dream Theater and Dragon Force or any other any of the following foundations, their foundations came from Benny Moore. All right, let's check this out, guys. This is a bit of a listen. So here we go. Lengthwise, bit of a listen. Oh, listen to that great vintage tone. I say that with respect. Look at that. Can 
you hear the uh, synth lead behind what the guitar player is doing? All right, now it killed away. Sounds like this could be in Final Fantasy VII, right? That little section. <laughs> So a repeated phrase. <laughs> wow, what a great vintage sound. I love the synth, man. That synth lead, that's like, that's unison. switch up there. Can you hear that pad in the background? The keys play? It's light, but it's there. a little bit to that bass too. Tone. Monophonic vibe on the lead, too. <laughs> what did it just turn her into? This reminds me right there, that little section reminded me a little early roundabout from Yes. A little 
Jeff Beck vibe. Satriani vibe there. Our tones are so clean. Look at that. Nice sweeps. So this is the same phrase that he had established already early on. Gamey stuff here. It's great. so good that's all i got to say about that i think there isn't anything i can say any more than what i had said during it was playing um what a nostalgic great uh arrangement and playing and those guitar tones everything about it just the recording of it I've, if there's anybody who's you know into their 40s plus you listen to something like this and it just just by the sound of it the engineering the techniques of that of the era um, I'm going to say this had to have been done in the late 80s. I don't know. I can't. Let me take a look. See if it says, uh, no, actually, gosh, released 1999. Well, th then they had to have done it to analog. Uh, that's what it could have been as well. So it was 1999. And, um, but the, in but the way, cr the way it was crafted. Yeah, that's what it says here. It was released on 1999, but you're right, Amon. That's why I'm going, What? So maybe perhaps it could be, oh, you know what else that I find out um, is that, oh, it, no, it can't be the four track, really? They could, it's possible, always possible. I'm just wondering, like, that's insane. Um, but what you find is a lot of these legacy musicians, kind of like uh, Dave Grohl, have consoles from the 80s and two studers, you know, uh, hooked up, you know, to make 32 tracks and stuff. And that's that big thing, you know, between the analog and digital, you know, world. But I, I don't know. But it definitely had that more old school analog vibe. And uh, as far as music and composition and stuff, everybody here was dead on about, you know, the neoclassical neo neo vibe of it all. And... Um, I kind of can imagine, uh, Lisa, when you were saying that um, having like a real, there, there was a, there was an, a humble vibe in this performance. And I think a lot of that really came together when we got broke into that funk section. Like he didn't take himself that seriously. He knew he crushes, but it was like, let's time, let, it's, it's, it's just time to do the music. Let's just do music. 
and not worried about how many, you know, sweep sandwiches we can put inside a loaf of, of, of riffage. The hell did I just say? Might have to go back and listen to that. <laughs> See if it makes sense. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was wonderful. I was just, I was entranced in the whole experience just because of the sound of the recording and stuff. Because, I mean, truth be told, that style of music, I've, you know, we've all heard tons of times by different musicians, obviously in that era of, or in that time of the neoclassical <coughs> late 80s, early 90s vibe. So I was just more digging it. I, I don't know, it was just kicking up nostalgic dust for me. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let me reflesh. I reflesh. All right, next up is um, Diabeto Guy. Di di diabetes Guy? Diabeto Guy? If I get your name wrong, you know, forgive me. Oh, come on. Oh, you're going to want me to listen to this? I don't know, man. This is going to be like, every time this comes up, I'm like, what am I in for? And first of all, also thank you very much as well. And you too, Lisa, for your very generous donations. Um... And that being said, guys, we are doing some more Risk of Rain 2. And um, this is uh, the raindrop that fell to the sky. And so uh, there's a little message in here that says, For Leprous, the sky is red. I don't know quite what that means. But this is from Risk of Rain 2. The whole soundtrack is by Chris Christodololu. And I think I love this. He thinks I love the synth park. But yeah, no, I'm already a fan. I'm already hands down a fan of um, um, this composer. So every time that I get it suggested this, I know I'm just going to be in for some full-on joy. All right, guys, let's do this. Okay. know he's setting us up for something right Pink Floyd vibes. Now where his bass arrangements coming in is now giving me yes vibes.
Oh my god, I'm glad he stopped that rhythm pattern, but I was starting to get a little like... choice for the bass. So far we've been just hanging in that same pattern. sound. magical things about this is that with that lead work and everything is really rinsed with a big pre-delay in the reverb so you can really saturate that and give it a very ambient vibe regardless of what he's doing and where he's going yeah I'd be bummed like that turnip <laughs> if that was the case Listen for how long that tails off, that reverb. Big pre-delay and a small single slap. I'm just gonna buy the game just to support him and listen to the music.
What is that monophonic vibe I love? Like? A lot of that 70s lead keyboard proggy vibes. Kind of has a, a, Medi a Mediterranean or Italian turn through this here for the chord changes. change but I don't know what to expect every time I listen to his works engineering how many of you guys fully approve of this track and its uniqueness and its ambiance that it created very hypnotic um, once he, I think once before, a couple times before, um, we listened to some of his works. I said it's almost as if, if what what writing for video games do for composers is you, could, you you have a lot of space to really flex creativity. And in this case, he's I'm, I've I've never seen the game. I've never played the game. Uh, the music is absolutely insane. I have some people here that have said they played the game. It's really good, but. I can't imagine, like, I'm going to have to just look up a scene, a cut scene on my own and just watch it come together or something. Because in of itself, it, he is having such an amazing time playing all of his lead work that he's doing. And he's a master at setting a vibe. This little syncopated works and stuff that he does rhythmically and everything that he does. He didn't really, I mean, he did step out of the box twice, it felt like. And what I mean by that is that, you know, an existing pattern or series of chord changes that you kind of start to melt into. And I think each time is when they actually changed a little bit of the, um, of the thumbnail here. But still, this composer's intricacy and details towards uh, 
rhythmic arrangements and performance. Actually, what's unique is that his his um, basic tracks are so wonderfully complicated yet soothing with the intricacies rhythmically that when he's actually playing a lot of his lead work, a lot of his lead work stays in what I would call a straighter pocket. You know, except for maybe any emphasis on the syncopation he may want to do. And what I mean that, when it's straighter in the pocket, is that he's really doing eighths, sixteenths. You know, some of his runs will scatter up, you know, uh, like, like glissy. I like to call it glissy. Kind of like this uh, um, legato kind of runs. But a lot of his work melodically in his leads is a little straighter because he's already got enough complicated things going on in the background with his rhythmic arrangements. So um, he's based in Athens. Okay, thank you, Jokan. Uh, so I just was, this was just great. And thank you. And I'm a fan. I'll bet you he has stuff on Spotify too. I, I would be the guy, see, I'm the guy that if I really like it, I'm buying it on Bandcamp, and I'm also going to put it on my Spotify hit list. <coughs> so, anyhow, very well. Thank you so much. All right, Jerdman. Hello, Jerdman. Are you in the house? How are you? Let's see what Jerdman would like. Jerdman would like... Let's see here. Celeste. Oh, I like Celeste. I got Celeste. I play Celeste. I haven't for a while, though. But it's, uh... I got you. This one is called... Uh, Reach for the Summit. Oh, no, I don't have Celeste. What am I saying? I got Stardew Valley. <laughs> so, bo so just gone. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I pulled those two together, but... Um, Anyhow, uh, this song, and thank you for your donation. That's very generous. I appreciate it. This song is called Reach for the Summit. And uh, a little bit of a long track, everybody, so we'll just get ready and chill. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying hanging out here. Uh, I enjoy that you enjoy that I'm enjoying hanging out here together with all of us that we listen to music. The message is, hey, Jeeves, hope you enjoy this. This track plays during the last chapter, the final push to the top of the mountain. Each part of the final chapter is like a recap of each prior chapter, including aspects of the music from each chapter before. And every other, every part of this track will loop in game until you get to the next part of the level. Okay. You guys, let's get ready. Let's chill with Jerdman. And this is going to be a bit of a long track as well. Here we go. Another great composer. That was a nice change up, bringing this up there. Piano work is really nice on this. And the hybrid use for the bass sound, I think very obviously synthy.
Building on the pattern, very nice. nice. Excellent music for the description of the track. Climbing up to the last mountain, like on the final quest. bit of a ballsy lift for the section. Probably getting through a more difficult territory. I love how she does that with the melody. and working forward and it gives you a little sprinkle of like da, 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 it's very uh, like go get him of the synth lead she's using but she softens it up with a little space whistle This is this is really super transporting game music. Like I could see having to get through things, whatever you're doing, to get somewhere with this kind of music. But there's always that going forward arpeggiations that are happening. There's always some kind of go 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 influence in the uh, arrangement vibes.
I see, Park Pal. Well, right now, so far, she's been threading them together wonderfully, but still maintaining... You know, that arpeggiation's been going through since the second we've had this, the start of the track. Even though this is more ambient, you still have it back there, kind of keeping you in play. I love how she brings it back here. As if somewhere in the game they made it over the hill. It kind of reminds me of how Journey ends, the video game. How that music kind of drives you through the rest of that video game. It builds with the same kind of uh, intensity or call to action. I know we seem to be kind of close in a repeat motion here, but I can play this for quite a while in the background and be like, it's not getting predictable. There's just something about it that you know, I can listen to this while I'm doing stuff, cleaning the house. It kind of gives you that lift, you know, finish, 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 finish. Once again, another great opportunity for a composer to really, re you know, stretch out beyond um, what you would consider composing for media. And one of the things I've been learning uh, in this journey, because I'm, I'm always learning. I'm, I'm far from baked completely. I mean, as far as music. I'm, I, I'll just stop right there. Um, is... Uh, what I, what, I, what I learned from these composers is that even though, I think it's because everything that I do is in a very short structure as a composer, being a library composer, you know, getting something set, squared, done, minute and a half, minute and three quarters, you know, almost two minutes and stuff, and hurry up and hit it all and pack it and send it, that I forget that there's really great techniques to use to keep this uplifting motion and just go in and out of produ production layers and arrangements 
you know, and have a little fun with some of the choices that you make instrument instrumentally. But I think one of the big magical things as far as these arrangements that make it work for like an 11 minute, you know, playback here is the choice of the sounds that they use. I think that's one of the things we're going, why am I not over it? You know what I mean? I listen to this music and stuff and some of the patterns are repeating, certain things are happening there and I'm going, what is it that's keeping me listening to it and keeping me kind of going? And that's when I start to figure out, it's like the, um, the amount of energy that it takes to write these pieces um, is uh, as if it, uh, uh, applying the same amount of energy and choosing the right kinds of sounds in order to make them work, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I feel about that. Um, okay, uh, how about a little more wheel of cheese? We'll do a small wheel and a big wheel. Uh, I'm getting uh, quite a few donos, my friends. And so uh, after, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to um, do little wheel, big wheel of cheese. And I have, God, I do have quite a few donos here. Um, and then I'm going to take a short break. I'm just going to still hang out for a few more hours. So don't, you know, if you're down for the Happy Aloha Avocado Show vibe, you just stick around. Um, if not, you know how this works. If you missed it on this stream, I make it up on the next one. If we miss it on that one, I do a special uh, video listening to your music still, but it'll be an offline session. All right, let's go and listen to some Queso Nuevo. Let's see if we have more than three people. So let's check this out. Always have fun with Queso Nuevo. And let's see. Remember last time we only had three people? All right, how many we got? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, are you guys ready? Speed! Eternal Cardinal for the win. Well, Eternal Cardinal, if you're out there lurking, welcome. Let's see what you got here. And let me refresh. And here we go. Eternal Cardinal would like... Uh, a video game. Oh, this is another one that has a lot of great music in my experience. That would be Persona 3 Reload. The name of this track is Color Your Night. Uh, the message is, I never even played this myself, but watched someone else's stream, and this got stuck in my head. Yes! <laughs> music for the win. That's... That's that's great. I'm I'm glad to hear that. That's for me as a composer and musician. I like I like that. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, there, Eternal Cardinal. You're lurking in the background. Thank you so much. Let's go. <laughs> this and Cowboy Bebop and all this stuff. I love it. That road sounds on me. There's that soulful 70s Motown background vocal vibe. Great production. Nice like this, put your hands up. Love the more we ever from dust. Yo, you always got my back. How about that organ? Got your back. Don't you worry about that. No, double in with the roads. Classic sound. It's gonna be a good day. Good night. Like 
that kick has a very odd compression on it. I love that subtle strings in the background too. That's a 70 groovies. This, uh, the bass is in a good pocket in the mix, man. I love it. It's been a good day, good night. It's gonna be a good day, good night. Little sprinkles with the George Duke Stanley Clark vibe. That lower arrangement was doing with the strings too, the little bounciness. A fade, that's what we need. That's what we need is a fade on a track like this. A lot of nostalgia, a lot of pulling in from that late 60s, early 70s vibes. A little bit of that Motown uh, kind of sound going in there. Uh, kind of had like, like I said earlier, a little George Duke Stanley Clark combo uh, vibe to it. But what a great track, man. That thing was such a jam. And once again, Persona, I think, I think, I don't know, guys, set me straight if I'm wrong, which I count on. But it's like, like Persona, Cowboy, Bebop, they really hold the, the reins on really bringing to the experience this kind of music, this kind of production. The jazzy fusy smoke and more pulling from the 70s, really yo hip uh, kind of music and stuff. I mean, that's the way I kind of feel. Yeah, that's perfect. Couldn't have said it any better, Amon. It's like gateway jazz for the younger gen. That's exactly, I could not have said that any better. Amon, very well said. That's what I feel about this, what these video games do. Because um, I don't know who was said earlier um how much they loved it i saw it somewhere in the chat but i kind of i remember when my my daughters were like eight and nine and they'd hear music on something that they just happened to be kind of uh doing you know this is way before cell phones and stuff uh, or i mean you know smartphones and they were exposed to music of this nature and they were jamming. They were like, wow, what is this? And it, and it made me realize that's because the funnel of music that they were being fed was being fed by current pop culture programming of radio or whatever was going on at that point. So when a piece of work came by that sounded like this and they were open to it, I was going, yeah, I don't even know if there's ever gonna be a time where any kind of media is gonna be able to influence younger kids with these wonderful works, like like you said, gateway to jazz kind of vibes. Well, I had no idea. Obviously, I wasn't in the gaming world, so it's been around. But that's that's the magic of the video games for me is when it gets people get exposed to this, you know. So, all right, guys, let me do one more wheel of cheese really quick for the uh, queso uh, grande, if you would. And um, let me see something here. So let's do that, and then I'm going to take a break. And then I'm going to come back and continue the mission. So, queso grande, queso pobre, queso roto. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's go. Okay. Ooh, we got splintered up. If you're in it to win it, you're in it. Let's go. All right. Who we got to who we got to. Who we got the, oh, 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 creeps into the red, and it's hot chicken and diaper. 
Oh, man, hot chicken and diaper scores again. That kind of sounds kind of kind of like elderly care. I know, we talk about this. It doesn't matter. Are you back there, hot chick in a diaper? Are you, are you somewhere out there hanging out? Usually pops in uh, if, if this wins, but, uh, or is it my phrasing? I don't know. I can't help it. Is it hot chicken? Hot chicken? Like, like, hot, at, like a hot, sir, hot chicken? A diaper? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Nonetheless, nonetheless you win. And we are at the behest of your choice of, uh, let me see here, all right. Whoops, hang on, I made a boo-boo on my form. Boo-boo on my form. Okay. We're gonna listen to some music, some alternative music, and then I'm gonna take a quick break, stretching my legs. And so, whoops, here we go. The name of this track is called, the song is called Stay Away, and the name of the band is Muna, M-U-N-A. All right, we're doing this. Let's go. Wow. I like how everything is kind of mono right now. Even the reverbs, everything. Wow, what a unique approach to production. It really emphasized the power of the melody. And what a great tone of voice. Intense video, too.
trying to wrap my head on whether or not this is open tuning. Um, absolutely wonderfully unique track on so many levels for me. The first thing I got to mention is I got to go back to the fact that this whole mix was in what I would call a very small zone, uh, almost close to zero mono. And if, if you're not familiar with uh, the dynamics of listening to music, you know, obviously stereo left and right. Mono is a, doesn't have any stereo, um, in, uh, dynamics in it and this one barely gets out of the zero bubble and I thought that was so unique and it probably has a lot to do with the the the, the, the lyrical content the coldness of what it is she's singing about um, I did hear obviously <clears throat> uh, the guitar back there and I think Amon had mentioned it sounded like it was a 12 screen like it was a 12 string at the get-go <clears throat> but I didn't know also I was listening to it and it sounded like it was either a op open tuned or maybe in the key of uh, could have been B but G because there was a there was also uh, or maybe a I'm sorry because uh, there were some pedaled notes throughout the whole thing throughout the whole performance with the guitar playing uh, the vocals were absolutely stunning the video was great but a very unique experience for me I was going are they going to break away from this mono bubble and they didn't and so i really enjoyed it it was a great track thank you very much for having us listen to that